So let's begin. I'm going to be using Red Heart Boutique Midnight Thread this tutorial today. This is a fabulous yarn. It's really quite soft and I think it makes for great Christmas stockings. It has a bit of sparkle to it without being too much and it's really quite fabulous to work with. Now I'm not a traditional guy when it comes to Christmas of being red and white and green. I like more of the father Christmas kind of idea with the burgundies and muted colors just like so. So my stocking will be made with the Midnight today and you can mix and match and it is a transition yarn too. So you'll be able to see the colors work out before your eyes. I'm going to be using a size 5 size or 5 millimeter size H crochet hook today and let's get started right now. So let's get started. We're going to create a slip knot to begin and remember that never counts as one and slip in your hook just like so. I'm going to be giving you options throughout this tutorial today on making choices as you go along. So to begin with I need you to chain 43. I'm not going to do that lie with you on camera but you just have to chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and please go all the way to number 43 on your own and when we come back I'm going to show you a little trick on how to make in the perfect edge at the very top of your stocking. I now have my 43 done and this stocking on the top part is not worked in a continuous round. We're going to do a little whip stitching on the very back of it later on in this tutorial. So what I want you to do is that we're gonna go second chain from the hook. So we count back one and two and instead of going in the front side I want you to turn it over and get the back hump for when you go to do this and I need you to single crochet yourself all the way across. And so you're just gonna go all the way across and then when we come back I'm going to give you some options because you'll notice in the photograph it looks like it's double crochet which it is but I decided for myself if, if a kid is gonna ram the stocking full of stuff I thought the stitches would be better if it looked a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna give you some options because if you have some options because you're just gonna need a tape measure in order to measure the next part of the tutorial anyway. So you can change your stitchers at any time uh, that you want to as long as you don't lose the count of the 40 two that are going across. Remember we started off with 43 but because we went second chain of the hook that means that we end up having 42 left. So continue to single crochet all the way across. So I've just come out to the end of the line and now I wanna turn the work and here's where I'm going to give you choice. This right now is the very top of the stocking and we're gonna keep growing it until we hit to the bottom heel area. Now when we do that we have to actually crochet this. You will notice in the instructions that there's no row, uh, row count. It just says measure out 10 inches. So here's the, the fun part about this. You can change the stitches at this point as long as that this here from the top all the way down to the heel equals 10 inches. So I noticed in the pattern it has double crochet. So let's review that. So we have one, two, three. We're gonna chain up and then it just says skip the first stitch which is right underneath and just go to the, the next one. That's there and then you could just double crochet across. But you will notice that there's gapping spaces there and that's as per the pattern and maybe that's what you want. So it's good. But I wanted something a little more tighter than that. So what I could do and what you could do is many different options at this point. What I did is half double crochet. So I could still speed along pretty good but keep the stitches tighter. To half double crochet you're going to chain two instead, one and two and then simply come into that same stitch right underneath and start with your half doubles. And so to half double crochet is wrap into the stitch, pull through and then pull through all three. And you will continually do that all the way across. So you can see it provides a nice tight finish just like so. You could also if you wish coming back to the start this is where the fun options are. The heel by the way is doll done in single crochet just to answer that question. So to single crochet you'd only chain one same stitch underneath and then just single crochet across. So you can decide what you wanna do for these 10 inches. The goal here is not to lose the number of stitches going across the row so that you will not have a misalignment of the stitches. So continue to do that and what I want you to do is come and join me. Just go back and forth just doing the same thing. You can even uh, change your stitches. You could do single crochet, half double, double and then come back and just really play with it as you go along. Change the colors as often or as little as you wish and when we come back we'll start the heel. So off camera I've been working on the project and I've been doing half double crochets all the way across just like so and I now have my 10 inches of a flat panel just like so. You see it looks really good and what we're going to be doing with this panel eventually is kind of folding it in half and this is becoming the top part of 
the actual stocking just like so. So now that I have my 10 inches across we're just going to fasten off this color at this time and we're gonna bring on the heel color and that that's gonna be the next part of this tutorial. So let's begin the heel. I fastened off over here and it says as per the instructions we need to skip over 32 stitches. So I counted over 32 and then I went to the 33rd where I marked it with the stitch marker just like so and this is where we wanna begin. Now the back of the heel works in conjunction with this piece but it also works conjunction with this piece coming back around the other side. So in actual fact this basically is the heel starting on one side of the stocking. It will go around and then eventually come to the other side of the same spot. So let's begin. We're going to fasten on our next color. Could be any color that you wish. And we're gonna fasten it on. So you're gonna skip over to the 30, to the 33rd spot. You could either mark it with a stitch marker just like you did or just count it and just start at that point. Let's fasten on and we're gonna do that right here in a second fasten on and then what I want you to do. So we're just gonna fasten it on with the slip stitch, chain one and then single crochet into the first stitch. And then just hang on right here. So here's a tip for you. What you needed to do is that you needed to make sure that there was uh, 10 stitches between here and this spot that you just joined on. For example, say you counted over 32 and all of a sudden you're right here and you only have this much left. Your stocking is not gonna be in balance. So the reality is is that you could have and what I did too just to make sure is that I counted back to make sure that there was 10 stitches between here and where it joined. And so that's a personal choice that is up to you. So now that we have our first one it says to single crochet into the next nine stitches. And so that that's what we have left. So we have single one and two, three, four, five, six, seven and then eight and nine. Just like so. And so now what you want to do is just grab the same spot. So on the other side just kind of bring it back like a tube or a can and just bring it back around and just begin to start into the first spot. So then for that one it says single crochet into the next 11 stitches of the other side. So we're going to just carry on. So just go over to 11. So one and then two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine, ten, and there goes my yarn, eleven, just like so. And so basically now you have that first uh, row in here. So if you fold it in half, technically that heel should be right in the center point of the two just like so. So let's uh, begin to do the shaping of the heel and this is so simple it's not even funny. To begin the heel we're gonna start and we need to come back to the almost like to the center point here and then just a little bit further over. So you're going to notice that we're going to chain one first and we crochet into that same one that we started with. So we do that one okay and it says into the first 14. So that included this one here. So this is one and then it's two and then three and four, five, We have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, and thirteen, and fourteen, just like so. So there is your fourteen stitches now in. Let's move up to the next row. So we're just gonna turn our work just like so and we're going to chain up one and single crochet into this one and then into the next um, six. So there's a combined of seven. So one, two, three, four, and five, and six, and seven. 
and that's it for that row. So now you can see now this heel when you put the two just like back to back like this you can see it's pretty well in the center of that. So this is the trick on being able to do the remainder of this heel. Now I'm gonna give you some tips in just a moment. So here's how you complete the remainder of the heel. Every time you go now back and forth you're always gonna go to the next one that is down here. So let's uh, begin we're going to chain up one and then count that as one and it doesn't really matter on your count you just have to make sure you go uh, beyond it by one. So it's actually a total of seven because that makes sense. So you're going across and I'm coming down so this is the last one and so your next one is actually down here like so. Then you turn your work and you chain up one starting in your first one and you just single crochet yourselves across again but you go one extra. And you keep doing that until you get to the actual outside layer right on the outside. So you're gonna keep doing this until you run out of stitches all the way across on both sides of the heel. And it's a way of keeping your heel in balance. Really easy. You don't need to count. That's why the instructions are th that simple. So once you get there then you go down like so. Turn your work. Is chain one single crochet again. Do you get that? You just have to keep going an extra one at the end. Okay, so we're coming back across. Okay, got one more. And look at that. You're going back all the way to the next one down here. Okay, turn your work. I'll show you one more time. Chain one, start up. Whoops. And continuing along, single crochet. It doesn't get any simpler than this. This is how the heels are done on socks and etc. as well. So if you've ever confused on how socks are done, okay, you make sure you get that last one in, okay, and then you look down to the next one here. See and that'll pull it down just like so. And you're gonna notice this is gonna start bowing out and creating the perfect um, heel. So continue to do that. So every time you're just uh, single crocheting across just include that extra one at the end and just when we come back I'll, I'll finish off the heel and then get you started on the next part. So here we have it. The heel is now complete and this is what it will look like at this point. So you can see we kinda gone in a V shape and we concluded that we added an extra every time we got uh, to the end and then basically uh, this is what it looks like. So you have an open back at this point. The heel is now done and now we're ready to go on to the beginning of the heel like from this or from the foot going forward. So let's uh, begin. We're going to join on again our yarn at the back. So we need to just count over to the tenth stitch in the middle and then we're gonna join on with the same color that we've been using all along. And then what we're going to do is that this is an easy way to remember is that we're gonna be crocheting along this edge. We're going to be skipping over st two stitches when we get here just to kind of pull it together just like so. We're going to then uh, crochet around here at this point and then we are going to skip two stitches on this side as well to keep it in balance as well. So let's uh, begin to do that next and let's get started. So let's begin. What I did for myself is that if your counts are off at any point at this point it does matter. So what we want to do at this point is that we wanna make sure that the stitches stay in balance to each other. So what you can do is you can just fold your heel just like so and then determine what the halfway point is and that's how I got mine or you can count it if you are accurate but if you're not that's an easy way to cheat the system. So what we're going to be doing at this point is that we're going to join in our yarn Okay, and we're going to join it just like so. And the remainder of the foot is now done all in single crochet. So let's begin. We're going to single crochet in the remainder of the heel. Okay, and I wanna make sure I don't get that stitch marker in. <laughs> just wanna make sure I get this straggler down on top and I wanna single crochet myself across. We're still continuing to work in rows going back and forth and we're gonna be sewing along the bottom of the foot anyway. So this is an easy way. You can hear that I'm not counting and what I wanna do is that I wanna make sure that we're keeping in balance with each other. So, so I'm just crocheting along the heel 
here. Okay, so I got to the last part and then we're going to skip two stitches down here and just go to the third like so. And that just brought everything together. We're gonna use a darning needle at this point to just fasten in this end. So now that we're down here we're just going to single crochet ourselves all the way around till we get to the other side. So very easy. You know sometimes a darning needle is all you need just to uh, make those final touches on a on a project. And uh, it's something that I'm not against using for sure. Okay, so what I wanna do is that I wanna make sure that I'm counting back. So here's the heel area. You can see this is the skip two. I just happen to be stopping at this particular moment. I'm gonna take out the other stitch marker that was in there. And then I'm just simply just going to start off at the top just like so. So this side here you'll also need a darning needle. And just continue to go all the way back to where you started but you're not gonna go in continuous rounds. You're gonna stop and then we're gonna turn our work and then we're gonna carry on from that point. Okay, so we wanna stop on the stitch that's just before it. Okay, so we joined here. We wanna stop here. And that's where we're gonna conclude this round. So I'm gonna turn my work and here's where I've kinda lied to you. Um, I said that it's single crochet for the remainder of the foot. It's actually not. You actually have to repeat back on going back up to the stocking area of rounds number two and three. But because I did half double crochet I'm going to want to do half double crochet again. So what I wanna do is that I wanna make sure that I'm keeping the right count. So for example um, in the original it had half double crochet or sorry single crochet and then a double crochet. And what I wanna do is that I wanna make sure that it stays in balance. So I'm gonna be doing 10 rows or 10 uh, rows back and forth of half double crochet at this point. So to do that I'm just going to chain up two and then just come back down into the same one and just keep going back and forth. So I want you to complete off 10 uh, rows. So you can either complete what the pattern is telling you to do at this point or you can just if you ad lib like I did just make sure it's 10 rows to going down and then we're gonna start decreasing for the toe area. So let me do that off camera and when I come back I'll have that done and, and carry you along throughout this tutorial. So now I have my 10 rows complete just like so. And so basically the bottom of the foot is still open. The back of the stocking is still open just like so. And you can see the heel is in just like there. So now I'm going to fasten off at this point with this uh, red burgundy-ish color. <laughs> and I'm gonna start the, uh, the toe area. The toe is really really simple. When we come back I'm going to show you where I marked it. Because if you're off by any stitch counts at this point it's really gonna matter. So I'm gonna show you some cheating techniques. I know how you love those and basically I left on enough tail at this point. This is just a fluke so I can whip stitch this stuff together afterward as well. But before we do that we want to start to do with our toe area as well and that continually is working in rows and not in a round circle. So let's begin to do that next. So to begin what we're going to do is that we're going to just fold this in half. Okay and we're not gonna pull on it or make it look like it's gonna be kind of like stretching at any point. And what I wanna do is that I wanna match up the back area here. This is where it's joining on the bottom side and I just kinda wanna fold it just like so. So what I need you to do is that I need you to mark the two most middle sections of stitches right here. So we got one and I got the next one right there. The toe area is actually worked in two separate panels and then they come together. And what I've done is that I've marked the middle point here. So on the one side we're gonna go right to the middle here and then the other side we're going to start the other one. So let's just do one side first and I'm gonna join it exactly where I fastened off with the other one just to make it easier for myself. And you're gonna have to do this for both sides. So what you wanna just do then is that just fasten on. So let's get our stragglers out of the way. And we're going to chain one and then we're gonna start off with two single togethers. So we're just gonna go into the first stitch, pull through and go into the next one, pull through. That's two together and then we're going to pull through all three loops. And now we're going to single crochet. You can either count it out but I told you to mark that middle section because that's what I want you to do because that's where you're going to stop. 
and when you get to the other side then basically you just wanna continue to um, do a decrease on the other side as well. So let's just pull that out of the way. The stragglers have gone in far enough. So I'm just looking for that middle section where I've marked it. Just like so. So I'm only gonna get the first one of the two that I marked and then I'm leaving the other one out for the other side. So what I wanna do at that point is that I wanna back out again. I wanna make sure I leave that final two out, out of the mix. So there, there's one and two and we wanna do a decrease right at the very end like so. So now what we're going to do for the remainder of this is that we just have to go back and forth. So we're gonna chain up one first, single crochet just like so and then we're just, when we get to the end of the rows we always wanna pull, pull a decrease move. So we wanna do that single together uh, crochet together and stitch again and you wanna do that at the end of every row now going until you have a leftover of three stitches and you'll be pretty well in the middle of this whole gray area that you can see on screen. And we're gonna wanna do this for both sides and I'm gonna show you some tips in just a moment on how to, where to start so that you can keep it in balance. Okay, so what I've done is that I've gone one too many again. So the final two, so that I have two left is one and then two and then decrease. So again turn our work. So just chain up one. Okay, start off right away with a single crochet going all the way across and continue to do that and decrease on the ends of each and every row. And I'll be right back and I'll have this done and I'll show you tips on starting the next one. We're now gonna move up one row and we wanna do single together decreasing as well. So we're gonna chain up one first and then the first two stitches are gonna go together. Just like so and then we're going to single crochet ourselves across. But the final two stitches are gonna come together as well. So with every row we're going to be decreasing on both sides. We wanna continue the same trend uh, for the remainder of the toe area for this particular panel. The same thing will be done on the other side and then once you get to the final two bring them together like so. So turn your work. So we're going to chain up one first. The first one comes together so pull through, go to the second, pull through, pull through all three loops and continue to do that. So you'll notice that it's gonna get a lot quicker to be able to finish because you have less stitches going across when you do this. And then your goal is, is to end up with three stitches left at the end before fastening off. So you gotta make sure you just look for that and it's just really quite easy once you get down to the, the grind. So you just wanna look for your final two stitches. There they are, one and two. See, and then turn your work again. So just chain up one, first two to come together and then just single crochet across. The final two are together as well. Continue that same trend going all the way and when we come back I'll show you tips on sh uh, starting the second one because if you start the second one well properly it'll turn out just as good. So now I have my final here and I just wanna trim off my loose end just like so and then finish off. So you can see that it's not like a, a, a sharp triangle it's more like really wide at the bottom. So now what we wanna do is that we wanna continue along. So for example, we actually fastened on at the end here. So we went on and we went this way. So what we need to do in order to keep this in balance with each other, to keep this looking properly, is that we have to start off in the middle section just like so. So we're gonna start off with the second part of the, of the toe area coming on and just where the stitch marker is, the empty one because we mark two spots there and we join, chain one and then the first two come together just like so. And now what we're going to do is just single crochet yourself across and then the final two are gonna be together. And where have we done that before? On the other side of course. So we're just gonna continue to just to do the same thing you already just did but for the second part of the heel or sorry of the toe keep thinking heel and basically I want to make sure that it looks balanced with each other and then we're going to be doing some sewing after 
this part of the tutorial. So when I come back we'll have this done here and then we're gonna just, I'll show you how to whip stitch really quickly and then we're gonna carry on to do the top of the stocking. So the final two stitches are gonna come together like so. Turn our work and the first two come together. So we chain up one first, first stitch in, pull through, next stitch in, pull through. So you have three loops pull them together to make two together and continue to do that same pattern. When you get to the end do two together with the final two stitches as well. So I just finished the second half and I just wanna fasten off this and we're gonna start doing some sewing next and I wanted to make sure I did before I checked before I fastened off is that these kind of balance each other as well. So they actually can be sewn together. So now what we have to do is that we have to just now um, sew together and we have to pay attention to the color. So I wanna make sure when I'm sewing the, the toe area here I'm using the same color yarn and then the back here the same color and I wanna make sure that I'm looking at what side is the good side, what's the bad side because I wanna just make a conscious decision that I'm always doing it the same way. So I'm gonna turn mine inside out. Okay and what I wanna just do is then start slip stitching to begin. So I'm gonna show you some techniques on how to do that next. To begin this slip stitching I just put some string on here. At the very end I have a slip knot that's open and basically I just wanna go in and this is obviously the blue section so I just wanna make sure I go into the blue only. I don't wanna be too um, careless with grabbing too much of the yarn uh, because I don't want it really to be standing out too much. I wanna kinda blend it. So I'm gonna put the needle through that loop just like so and that'll hold it permanently into position. And I just uh, simply just wanna glide across and just kinda whip stitch going across both sides of the toe area just like there and I wanna make sure I keep that straggler down on top of the line so I can keep it buried as we go along. So that's how you would do it and then I'll show you how to fasten off this uh, string as well. So I'm just being nice and gentle about it but I'm also being kinda of firm at the same time as we're going all the way across. And you're gonna wanna do this with the back heel area. Don't forget about that middle section right here that I want you to finish off as well. And then when we come back we'll start off on the top area of the stocking. When whip stitching and coming all the way back to the end all you just need to do is just glide the needle back and forth three times. So you're gonna come back in the direction that we just came from. One, coming into a different part of the fiber area for two and coming back into the same area. So this is how you would fasten off and make it really kind of pretty. Um, it's impossible for the stocking to unravel itself uh, when you go in three different directions like you are at this point. And so once you get to that point you can just simply fasten on. You don't need to worry about it ever falling out unless something weird happens. So that's how you would do that. So continue to do that same process and so when you look at it from the other point of view it'll look like it's perfectly done. So here's what my stocking looks like so far. This is the outside and the angle's great. I'm loving the heel, loving the toe and now it's time to do the cuff and the cuff is really uh, simple. We're gonna do that um, not attaching to the project at this time but you can see either side you look at it. This uh, stocking looks really quite amazing. I love the little uh, shine too. The, the Midnight Yarn does an amazing job with this. So let's start the cuff next. Let's begin the cuff. We're just gonna start off with the slip knot using the same size crochet hook at this point and then we're just going to chain 47. I'm not gonna do that for you. So the, the rotation on this one here, the other one you remember is probably uh, 42 or 43 when we started. We're doing a little bit bigger so that it can uh, circle around the top of the uh, stocking without having it compress. So you're gonna want to just chain 47. So that was one, two, three, four and five and when we come back I'll get you started and this one is really easy as well. So we're gonna be single crocheting 11 rows. So this is gonna be one of 11. So going second uh, from the hook what we want to do is that we want a single crochet. So we're gonna start with just skip over to the second. So one and two go to the second. Turn it over. Get that back hump like I showed you in the very beginning of this tutorial and just single crochet into the back hump so that it leaves a perfect uh, edging at the top. So continue to do that and just continue to go back and forth single crochet uh, for a total of 11 rows and I'll, I'll do that off camera and when I come back 
will then begin the bottom. There's a little bit of a fancy little shell work at the bottom and then I'll show you how to join it um, to your stocking and that'll conclude today's tutorial. Okay, once you get your 11 rows in, you're just gonna fasten off, leave enough of a tail so that you can whip stitch it to the beginning of the thing. So just turn it around and just make sure it's flat just like so and just continuously uh, whip stitch it across. When we go to uh, fasten on this project we wanna make sure this whip stitching will appear on the inside of the cuff. So you just wanna match everything nicely. Just going in one side and then out the other side of the other half of the cuff. So continue that, fasten off uh, this and then when we come back we're gonna start the bottom scalloping edge and then we're going to then fasten this onto the to the stocking and then we're going to do the top scalloping edge and we're almost done at this particular point. Okay, we're gonna start and first of all this is the outside seam that I did. We wanna turn it so that it's on the inside of the cuff. So you can see it's a lot nicer and we're going to continue to start off like where we left off and we're going to do it. This is the right side of this if you're looking at it and I wanna capture the stitches right when I started. So we're gonna be using a smaller hook, a size G, four millimeter and we're gonna use the same color and we're gonna fasten on. And this is the lower cuff edging. So we're just gonna fasten on, bring it through and grabbing that yarn and pulling it through. So let's uh, begin as per the instructions. It says that we've just joined it and we're chained one. Okay, which I've just done and it says single crochet in the first two. So the first two we're going to single crochet one and two and it says that we want to do some fancy stanchy stitch, uh, stitch work. So we're gonna double crochet. We're gonna skip the next stitch. So we're gonna skip that one and we're going to double crochet first, chain one and then double crochet and it says to do that twice. Okay, so in order to complete that off we're gonna double crochet one more time, chain one and double crochet and then we're gonna come back down to the row underneath. So it says to skip uh, the next single crochet and then single crochet into the next and it says to repeat from the same pattern. So here's what we wanna do again. So we're gonna repeat. So we're gonna skip the first one, go to the second. We're going to double crochet, chain one, double crochet. We wanna do that twice. So we're gonna double crochet, chain one and double crochet. Okay, we skip the next stitch, come into this one for a single crochet and then repeat the shell again. So we skip the next and double crochet and continue to do that all the way around on the end of this cuff. And when you get all the way back around the final one is that you just slip stitch it to where you started just like so. And then you're gonna fasten that off really nicely and then that concludes that and now we're gonna start then attaching this whole component to the actual top of the stocking. Okay, let's begin to join the cuff to the top of the stocking. So we just wanna slide the stocking in between and we wanna match up the back seaming areas on both of the stocking and the new cuff. So our goal here at this point is to match the stitches to each other. So let's uh, begin to do that. So we're just gonna start off with a slip stitch or a slip knot and we are just gonna kinda eye it up basically and essentially what you have to do at this point is that you just have to single crochet starting at the back going in one point and going in another and just single crocheting around both of the components and you just have to kinda eye this up to make it look great. Okay, so we're just, uh, I just did a slip stitch, chain one and then single crochet. So whenever I go into the front side I wanna make sure that I'm matching it to the, to the stocking on the other side. I'm keeping the stragglers down on top of the line so that I can hide them. You can also use a darning needle afterward but it takes more time. Okay, so just continuing just to grab both and you essentially you're kinda sewing them together but using your crochet hook at this moment. So we're gonna be using this particular uh, round that we're doing now or row that we're doing now to do the um, finaling off of the scallops on the top of the stocking. 
This also does a really nice final edge on the top. So that's what we have at this point. You can see it's being attached to the stocking and to the cuff at the same time. Continue to do that all the way around. I'm just coming up at you with a quick tip here. So for example, say you actually somehow screwed up that you have too many stitches on the cuff and not enough on the stocking or vice versa. The what you have to do is that the cuff actually has to match the outside, right? So for example, if you don't have enough of the stocking side of it, you can just fake it, okay? So just put it in a, a, a single crochet just in the cuff itself and then continue along and then just grab the next one that's available in the stocking itself and it's kind of a way of skipping over the stocking area or vice versa. So if you have too many stitches in the stocking and not enough in the cuffing, then basically you could put um, one in the front here and then skip one of the uh, stocking stitches and go to the second over on the other side and it's a great way for keeping balance. So it's a it's a perfect way to be able to go um, and then when you do your final edging that we're gonna do in just a few moments then you just gotta fake it at that point and uh, make it work instead of having to frog all of your work. So it's about cheating the system if you can and you will notice as you come out to the end. So you kinda see that the blue has a little bit extra so I'm just going to put in one for the blue okay and then I'm gonna go into the next blue and then attach it to the next stocking and basically that kind of pulls it back. See? Just one stitch like that and then go into the next blue, next stocking like so. And so it becomes a really easy process when you do it from that point of view. So continue that and uh, we're just gonna start the next uh, row and it'll be the final of this particular uh, project for today. So let's do the top of the cuffing area. I'm coming to the end. I wanna slip stitch first coming around and we wanna chain one and single crochet into the same stitch. So now we're gonna do exactly what we did on the top with creating that, that scallop look. Okay. So what we're going to do then is this skip one stitch, go to the second for double crochet, chain one and then double crochet into the same one and we wanna repeat that twice. So we're gonna double crochet, chain one and double crochet. We're going to skip the next one, single crochet into the next stitch available and then skip the next one and then do the same thing with the double crochet. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, okay and then double crochet, chain one and double crochet and skip one stitch, come to the next one single and skip next and do the same thing. When we come back all the way around we're gonna create the loop that you can hang it and that will conclude off today's tutorial. So we're coming all the way back around and I'm getting my final shell in there and essentially I want to, uh, we're gonna skip a stitch but I'm gonna join it to the very beginning one just like there. So now we wanna create the loop that you can hang from the fireplace. So it's all it is is 12. So 1, 2 is chaining of 12, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 and then slip stitch it back to the beginning. We did and then you can fasten off, weave in your ends and now your project is good to go. So here is the conclusion. You can see the scallop edging does a fabulous job right at the top. You know I've done stockings before where the color bleeds over in the top and it just doesn't look fabulous. Really amazing. It's permanently attached. You now have your loop and as you go through it you got that perfect heel going on. You got the perfect toe. All of a sudden you got a really perfect stocking to hang from the fireplace. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. Uh, join me next time as we have more free ideas, patterns and etc. available in video format. Until then we'll see ya.